Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. Welcome to another tennis nerd vlog. Today I wanted to talk about mental training, mental approach to tennis and uh, the how important that aspect of the game is. I've been struggling a little bit myself uh, over the years, finding that motivation, being mentally tough uh, in, in tough matches, uh, often choking in, in important situations. Last year I started working with a mental tennis trainer in Filippo Giuello of Mental Tennis. The idea was to test his method, uh, give him some exposure if it was good, and also to learn a lot more about the mental side of tennis. Uh, and I, I worked a lot last year on my mental side when I'm playing uh, competitive matches, tournaments and so on. And I saw a, a big improvement over the summer and uh, later on in the year. So uh, I was very happy with the, the work we did. It was mainly Zoom calls, maybe 30 minutes, one hour Zoom calls uh, once a month or so, uh, maybe a little bit more frequent for a while, uh, where we went through my matches and what happened. And uh, we talked about typical issues I have and mental weaknesses that I have and suffer from and um, typical you know, pressure points in your matches or tendencies you have, you fall back on, on something, you, you start playing too passively, you start doubting yourself too soon, you, you start the negative self-talk, which is very common when you start hating on yourself because you're not playing as well as you think you should. And you, you don't find that like inner intensity and, and intensity on court to, to keep fighting, to keep working hard. Uh, sometimes it could be for a reason that you're afraid to fail, you're afraid to let yourself down. And I suffered from some of that, definitely. And uh, I saw an improvement after working, thinking and approaching it differently in match play. And I wanted to cover a little bit of that today. Mental tennis is so important. Uh, I've just watched a few examples of that myself. I saw Marin Silic versus Jeremy Chardy uh, in uh, one of these Melbourne tournaments that are running now. Tennis is back, very, very nice to see tennis, especially I, I you know, make a coffee, sit down in the morning and, and watch some tennis. It's a great start to the day. And um, I watched uh, Marin Silic uh, throw away uh, kind of five, six match points against Chardy in the end losing in the final set tie break. And it's been clear with, with Silic that he's been suffering from uh, kind of the choker syndrome, from some men mental strength issues on the tennis court. He's just become a father, so huge congrats to, to Marin. But uh, I think he, he's been struggling on the court. Uh, this is a guy who's reached the final of Wimbledon uh, and um, won the US Open and has a very nice resume with plenty of titles. I think he's up to 18 titles, but the last one came in 2018. So he's been struggling for a couple of years now to find his form, to get back um, to playing his best tennis, because we know that when he plays well, he serves well, he has this huge forehand, and then he can beat pretty much anyone like he showed at the US Open in, in 2014. But he is kind of uh, suffering from this choker tendency and I discussed this with my uh, tennis buddy Joao uh, about um, you know, the kind of chokes he makes. And what's a choke? Well, it's when you're uh, clearly uh, has a, a big chance to win the match and you're just kind of throwing it away a little bit. It's not always that easy, obviously, especially on the highest level. These guys are ready to pounce on you for whatever mistake you make. But um, still, it's, it's kind of on your racket. It's you who should make it happen and then you let your nerves get the better of you. And I think I've seen this with, with Marin a few times now, and I hope he can find a way through it, uh, because it is a dark place you're in, uh, and uh, you need to really work on your mental strength. One example of uh, someone who, who, who focused on the mental side of tennis and brought their, the trainer to the French Open was Igas, Igas Viontek, as I talked about in a previous video. She won every uh, set in that Grand Slam and won the Grand Slam and uh, her focus on mental tennis really paid off. So the mental strength is a huge part of the game. One reason I admire Rafa so much, besides being a, a very nice guy, uh, he has that kind of fighter instinct. He's a lion on court. He's always coming in to, to work as hard as he can. He, he's still pretty gracious in defeat, but he works and tries everything to win a match and uh, well, not anything in the way that he's trying to obstruct the opponent or doing things that are not really in the rule book or at least skidding the rules and not being a, a sportsman but 
He's, he's fighting as hard as he can. Before he used to fight for every single point, he played every single point like it was the, the tiebreaker of a Grand Slam final. But now he's saving himself a little bit more, but he still has that intensity, that kind of rough a uniqueness that he brings to the court. And it's fantastic to see. Uh, truly bringing out that fighter spirit and I think that's something we we all need to to work on I definitely need that because I, I, I rarely have the motivation to work as hard uh, as I can in matches and even in practice sets and stuff I, I tend to play around too much and and uh, lose some points which I shouldn't lose so it, it's something I really need to work on more and more and do continuous training uh, on on this area and uh, I think if you're, you're the same, please comment below. I'm keen to hear where you are with the mental side of tennis. Uh, we can all be more like Rafa. And then we have uh, Novak, who goes more up and down in intensity. But when it matters, he's always 110% there. It's, uh, we've seen it over and over again, especially he likes to do it against a certain Federer, where he's down like match points. You've seen it a number of times, latest now in, in Wimbledon 2019. Pretty rough loss for Fed fans. Fed had two match points serving uh, at 40-15 uh, in the fifth set uh, for the championship, his 21st Grand Slam title. And he choked pretty much. I, I would, choking is a, it's a word that's maybe not apt to describe what happened, but he had it on, on his racket, made some maybe dubious decisions, and then he couldn't find his way back. He was broken. And after that, you, you knew kind of what would happen because Novak is so strong in these situations. It's just ridiculous how strong he is. Um, he has that kind of chip on his shoulder uh, when, when things start to go against him, maybe the audience, and then he brings out kind of the inner demon and he plays, uh, plays kind of computer level tennis. Um, so he's another guy that kind of can bring it. And when the stakes are high, he's there. Rafa is more constant intensity always bringing that 100% warrior spirit. And then we have guys like Nick Kyrgios. He doesn't even want to be there, it seems like. He has the massive talent and everything. Watched him today, this morning. He played 200 ranked uh, something, a French guy, uh, Andre Muller. Seemed to play above his level for sure, but still Nick was, was obviously rusty, which he is. But even in this match, even being one year away from competitive tennis, he should be so hungry to be back and play in front of the crowds. He looked like he didn't want to be there. He was always berating himself, shaking his head. Even when he was winning points, he was shaking his head. It's pretty frustrating to watch that. I actually like watching him play. Really impressed by his levels, his skill set and his power level of on serve and his forehand and so on. But it, yeah, it can be frustrating to watch that. And he, the question is, is he afraid to lose? Is he afraid to care too much because it will hurt too much when he loses? That's something I think some players suffer from. You don't want to, you know, give, your, give it your all because if you lose, that's all you got. So if you tell yourself that I was only giving 80% or I don't really care about this, then you always have this safety pocket where you feel like, you know, if I just gave it 100%, I, I would have won or, uh, you know, I don't care about it that much. You're kind of protecting yourself and your ego from defeat. And that's what's so refreshing to see with Rafa. He doesn't protect his ego. He doesn't need to protect his ego. He's always just fighting. And if it's not good enough, it's not good enough. Luckily for him, it's most often good enough. Um, so that's very fascinating to see. And then we have another, you know, mental tennis type. I would say it's Andy Murray, who, who can't seem to get going unless he's in a dogfight, unless he's really fighting. He won't be really fighting. So he kind of lets the opponent in kind of invites a, a tough match otherwise he's, he's not really there it seems he, he doesn't bring his a-game unless he can get into a really tough one so he doesn't just kind of breeze through his opponents like Roger for example he, he, he just waits until it's a really tough one and then he fights for it and, and usually comes out on top great fighter great spirit on the tennis court um, with Federer, there are a bit of different discussions about his mental strength. Some pundits talk about that he has mental weaknesses, to why he choked away the match against Novak. And he has been giving away some matches against Novak in the past with, with match points and so on um, a few years back in Grand Slams. Uh, but is Federer mentally weak? Can you say that a person who has won 20 Grand Slams and all the accolades um, that Roger has... Uh, can you call him mentally weak or a choker? I, I don't really think so. 
I think he doesn't have the mental strength of Rafa or Novak. Uh, perhaps more talent, uh, arguably, or at least in the kind of virtuoso department. But he, his game style is not just kind of allowing that um, mental strength to be seen in the same way that Rafa and, and Novak can do it. Rafa and Novak, they can you know, run down any ball, every ball. They're just amazing fighters, and, but they also play a little bit more passively, a little bit more defensively than Roger. And when you play attacking tennis, you just need to go for it and trust your instincts. It's not so much always the mental side of it. It's more trusting yourself and bringing the confidence. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So it's a little bit of a different mental approach depending on your game style. And I think maybe a part of that was what we see with some players, Sitsipas, whatever, that if you're an attacking player, you need another level of confidence in your game. Um, tennis is a confidence sport, but for attacking players, you need to always trust 100%, while defensive players can keep grinding a little bit more, keep waiting for the opponent to let his guard down, to lose a little bit of intensity, and then you're there to pounce. While attacking players need to bring it, bring it, bring it, and you might win 10 points in a row, but then you're on a bit of a slope then uh, and suddenly you're, you're losing 10 points in a row. And that's the tough part about being the, the guy who dictates or, or girl who dictates the points. So that's always tougher uh, in a way. And you have to, and you can just look at tennis stats. Uh, the, the way to win matches on all levels of tennis is to avoid unforced errors. If you just look at the pure stats. Uh, luckily, you, you, tennis is not a game that's only based on stats. It's a game that goes beyond that pure statistical analysis and approach. Uh, because if you put it in that and you make tennis kind of like a computer game, I don't think you'll find a lot of fun in it anymore. Uh, but uh, it definitely, if you look at the stats, you will see that making fewer unforced errors win you the matches. And then you have these kind of outliers like Roger and, and players that bring their aggressive game and win matches when they kind of beat the odds by, by hitting a lot of winners, a lot of good serves and so on, uh, which is fascinating. Roger might not be the strongest uh, mental player of the game ever, but he has turned around a lot of matches and I, it would be hard for me to call him mentally weak. Uh, not the titan perhaps of Rafa and Novak, but uh, mentally weak, no. Uh, I think it's, it's all a bit up and down for many players. You know, we have a guy like Verdasco, he's lost quite a few matches where he's playing amazingly well. It looks like he's kind of coasting towards um, the W, but he is not finding some issue somewhere, his confidence dips, maybe double faults come in. And that's always what we have to guard ourselves against and keep uh, our awareness around where our confidence is. Can we reset the confidence? Can we, if we lose a set, we need to restart the match. We need to come in there with fresh. It's a new match. It's a new, new um, scenario. Same if you could do that with points. You lose a point, you have to restart. You have to reset all the time. A lot of pros are great at that. That's why they're pros. For us recreational players, it's much tougher to reset. Uh, we tend to kind of fall into a negative spiral when things are going against us. And uh, instead of fighting, fighting, fighting to, to come back into the match, uh, we let it slide out of our hands or we just give up, uh, which is a really nasty feeling. And it's not uh, nice for anyone to be in that mindset when you, when you give up. Uh, you just need to fight and you'll probably find a way. And if you don't, at least you gave it your all. So you have that at least. I think that's important. And that's a mindset I'm trying to find. Um, but what, what you definitely need to work on and what I worked on, but I'm still struggling sometimes with is my intensity to come into a match ready to go, not feeling too nervous or too slow, make some really drastic jumps and shouts or show that you care about the match or about how you play and how you perform. It's not so much the end result, that's what I've been talking about uh, with Filippo, it's not the end result so much, it's about showing yourself that you're there, that you're playing as well as you can for yourself and that you're fighting. That's kind of towards you and, and what you feel good about in the end. Losing a match is fine, but letting yourself down is not fine. So you need to kind of fight hard for yourself and not for your opponent or not for the sake of the match or not for winning the match. It's about showing you that you really care and that you put in everything you have and you'll get more of an exercise, you get more enjoyment and uh, you put more into it, which is always better, I think. And that's what I'm working on. I'm definitely far from ready or perfect in that sense, but working on the mental side of tennis has really helped 
There are a few books uh, on this topic that I will put in the comments below. Um, the Inner Game of Tennis, uh, Tim Galway, I think he's called, uh, just putting this up from memory. And uh, a few other mental tennis books that I've read, but I really recommend uh, checking out Filippo. There might be other mental tennis trainers that give you more the tools to work on your tennis instead of um, just being like a tennis shrink. That's not how this works. It's about giving you tools so you can work in a match. Because if you're playing tennis in a singles uh, match, you're alone on the court. You don't have a coach likely if you're a rec player or club player. Uh, so you have no one really to turn to. And even the pros, they can't really talk to their coach. That's uh, against the rules. Uh, we'll see if that changes. Um, but uh, unless it's a team tournament, uh, they can't really talk to the coach. And then obviously they have this, you know, come on, come on from the, from the stance, but they can't really give any, any more advice than that. They just have to kind of coax them on and try to inspire them with what they have, a few, few words of encouragement, so on. Uh, so it would be fascinating to see like on-court coaching. Keen to hear what you think of that. How would that uh, change the way we see tennis? How would it change the sport? Would it be ridiculous? Would it be interesting to hear what they talk about? There are obviously language barriers and stuff that, that might be a problem there. Maybe it would add a layer of entertainment. If you watched Ultimate Tennis Showdown, um, maybe you have some ideas on, on how that format worked or how it could be improved and so on. Uh, but I find the mental tennis... Uh, side of things very interesting um, I'm really into this topic and I've been been trying to kind of dive deep down into it for a, for a while now too, but not really been able to integrate the learnings from those books into my own game until I really had to do a weekly call with Filippo and tell him about how my match play went and and what I did and when I had to kind of talk about it then I, I put more effort into actually playing well and um, now I'm kind of back into my old habits a little bit so I need to dig deep, uh, get back into the groove and uh, work hard on the mental side of things. I'm not the most competitive guy. I play tennis for the pure enjoyment, for the exercise mainly, because I love the sport. Uh, so for me to kind of work on the mental side of like competitive tennis has always been a little bit of a struggle. Some players that I play against or I see or you know on TV or, or even just in your club or whatever, they have that like super competitive spirit and uh, I'm pretty jealous of them sometimes it's not it's not within me uh, at all times it used to be a bit more when I was a junior and, and playing playing chess on international level and had more competitive approach and now when I'm a bit older it's a bit harder for me to find that to leave it all out on the tennis court for whatever practice match or tournament match I'm in but that's something we can all work on I will work on it uh, I will make more videos uh, with tips and ideas about strengthening your mental side. Uh, if you're interested in this topic, this was kind of a feeler video. Do you, are you interested? Do you think that could make an impact on your game? Uh, do you have, what kind of issues do you have mentally when you're playing tennis? Confidence, do you let yourself down? Do you talk crap to yourself, uh, telling yourself you're, a, you're an idiot or not playing well? You should stop doing that, obviously. You should bring a more positive spirit or just shut off all the negative talk. That's very important. I might go into some tips on how you can do that in, in coming videos if that's something that's interesting to you. So please let me know in the comments below what you think. That's it for this one. I'm trying to mix up the content a little bit. Rackets, news, predictions and uh, these kind of tips. Uh, I hope you like it. Uh, I hope you subscribe to the channel and you tell your tennis friends about Tennis Nerd. I really appreciate all the support I get. Thanks, have a nice day, and don't forget to play some tennis.